One of the great things about studying, and like I keep telling you that like every time I read it, I find something new, like there's just something deeper and something broader and something bigger that I come across uh, with each study, even though I may have read a passage who knows how many times before. And so this particular uh, essay or article um, by Chime and, um, or Hain, I'm not sure how the pronunciation is, and Laura, is um, he, he talks about how the word that we read as rib in Genesis, for a woman was taken out of man's rib, he, he, he talks about how that word is not rib at all and how it represents side or half or something like that, right? And it gives me, like, uh, it, it literally gave me such a broader and greater understanding of who we are as beings, right? And so the resources on this, on this study um, sort of correlate or surround or attach to basically what he's saying in this, right? And so what, one thing that he talks about is that, um, um, God created a human, he created a human being, right? That was neither man nor woman. But we in English, our English translations automatically say that it was a man first, right? Um, but the first being was just human, right? Um, which would go towards the genderless being, right? Um, and so when he calls this human to sleep, he split this human in half. And one side of this human became woman, and the other side of this human became man. And so as we go further into the, into the chapter, it says that man will leave his mother and his father and cleave or rejoin to his wife. And it just gives such a fuller understanding or a fuller reading, I think, to the joining, right? When we see that the first being was split or, you know, a portion of his body or his body was, was cut apart to create a new body, right? And so, and even the word cleave, like when we think of, you know, a man will leave his parents and cleave to his wife, I think of something that's been cut in half for the most part or cut in a sufficient way, not just a little piece of it. But so this article actually talks about, um, I mean, it's really, really beautiful. Let me see if I can pull it up. Um, because he talks so much about um, how in Jewish tradition they read um, they read this particular verse or these words to mean something completely different than what we read it as. And I think that with understanding the Bible, it's important to sort of get to one, the original intent of the word, and two, um, the cultural use of the word when it was uh, of the original word, but also also the words that it was translated into. And so this was Hebrew translated into Greek. And so part of my study was looking at what the Hebrew meant, but also what the Greek translators thought they were saying versus, you know, however many translations we've had at this point. So I, I, I was looking at this because uh, I read through the first chapters uh, in Genesis, as you recommended. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think we've touched on this a uh, in our one of our private conversations before so um that stuck with me actually what you've just re said now and you know where you're uh drawing from as far as like the word interpretation and translation and everything because i've learned from my independent bible study that many of the hebrew words are sometimes even if they're trying to interpret them as good as and best as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it's just like we don't necessarily have always the best words to represent what they're trying to say. So we don't have an equivalent for that at the depth and the magnitude that they're using. Mm -hmm. And that to me was fantastic. Like, um, um, and it, it, just as a side note, uh, apparently uh, there are so the languages that we that were out there in existence before and some of them are lost uh had like more ample vocabulary and excellent grammar so mm -hmm. 
God, yeah. when when God gave the word to Adam and Eve, it I think it was so much, you know, so much richer, uh, richer than than it is today. Mm -hmm. But back to Adam and Eve, like when I was reading again today, I was looking at. Um, so it started with um, Genesis one. So I was Genesis one and uh, verse twenty seven. And then, okay, so he created the creatures and then day six, he made the man. So I'm going to read verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So I stopped and paused right there because again, it's like, it's like, okay, well, it's not getting into first he made Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, and then I'm thinking, is it a summary of what's coming in chapter two? But, you know, if it's put like that, I don't know if it's necessarily like, I, I wouldn't, like right now, I no longer see it as, because I was thinking more of a summary, but I don't no longer see it as a summary. Like, it's, you know, God created... A statement. Uh, it, it's a statement, because mm -hmm. if God created them in his own image, we also know that God is both female and mm -hmm. male mm -hmm. so um you know adam was if you look at the name as you've done the name um name uh, search it means made out of earth. like earth but red earth mm -hmm. so it's just adam red earth and uh, you know like it, it's clear there that um you know, uh, we're getting the image of a creation and then God breathes life into his creation. But that creation, it, you know, it, it has both male and female before the separation mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. but exactly. What I, why I, what I didn't understand exactly is that why did Adam start to feel alone at some point? Like, I mean, I know he was naming the animals, and he saw pairs in animals, but why did he feel alone? Like what? Do I, that I that was a subtlety that I was like, why was he feeling alone if he was male and female? He saw the pairs. What was the? You know, well, any thought on that? Well, my I think my my interpretation of that is that um, even though he embodied male and female at that moment, he was still just one being, right? And so he was a single individual or it, you know, the human was the individual and not a part of a couple or partnership or community or anything. And so I think it's a longing that God just puts in all of us for, yeah, for a connection with another being, with another human, with another person, right? Um, um, and I think it's illustrated and how God created the animals and presented and presented the animals to Adam for naming. And he presented in pairs, right? And so, you know, it's, uh, to me, it's like a tutorial, <laughs> you know? Uh, look at me, I'm, you know, I'm the creator of all the world. I'm creating these animals and these animals have, you know, partners. These animals have pairs. These animals are part of pairs. They're, they're, these animals are going to have a, you know, community. They're going to have a kingdom, right? And Adam's watching this and he's like, well, why do the animals get, you know, all of this and I'm alone, you know? Mm -hmm. Where's my partner? Where's my community? Where's my kingdom, you know? And you I see, think... you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, you're making an excellent point there with the partnership because um, everything is the partnership mm -hmm. and including the relationship with uh, God, like, you know, it, it was created as a partnership, like God uh, created the animals and then made man and then um, um, asked the man to name the animals. So that's mm -hmm. a clear partnership. That's a clear, yeah. Yeah. you know, you know, come on board and, uh, you know, you participate. Put your stamp on and, it. Exactly. Yeah, put your stamp on it. And it's, it's, it's uh, he, he got, he, he was supposed to demonstrate accountability for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it was well, well illustrated, right? These, these are, 
you know, this is going to be your work. These are going yeah. to be your co-workers in the land, right? The animals. And this is what you need to basically nurture and cultivate the, the garden, the plants and everything, right? So Adam was there. He's like, God's creating this whole creation and Adam's part of it. You know, he's part of the, you know, part of the naming, right? Mm -hmm. Part of, you know, the beginning of understanding of what God was doing. And, um, you know, God pointed out, you know, he even tested Adam, you know, is this animal your partner? And Adam's like, eh. <laughs> can't do the cow, <laughs> you know? And then when he's put to sleep and he wakes up and God has this woman next to him, he's like, finally, right? So in my mind goes to how long was Adam naming animals, right? If you think of the whole earth, you know, all the vegetation, you know, um, and if everything began in the garden, how long was Adam naming these animals that he was like, finally, <laughs> God, God had hooked me up. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm guessing maybe it happened if you're in a garden, it, time goes by faster and not yeah. as, it's not the same as it would be for us humans on earth. Oh, of course. But, so, I mean, like we know but, it was like one day, but what's one day, you know? Yeah, but I mean, um, I, the thing is that um, I, I feel like um, uh, even though, you know, we're not going to get into the time situation, I, you know, I'm sure the uh, anticipation might have been extremely high on his part, but uh, the, in, the good, the best thing that I've ever uh, heard like I don't know it was a pastor that was talking about Adam and Eve and the creation of woman and it's like because when Adam why was uh, the female called a woman and then basically when Adam saw her said whoa and then it was woman <laughs> <Hell whoa. laughs> so just like you know that I was like whoa this is absolutely fabulous <laughs> yeah, yeah, what thank you right lord <laughs> Right. Thank so, you, Lord. <laughs> right. I love it. But, and, you know, the one thing I love about, uh, well, I would say I'm really happy that I learned a language, another language uh, in my youth, right? Because um, I think learning to speak and write and read other languages give you a broader understanding of how, how things can be misunderstood and mistranslated in text, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, with no intention or even with all good intention, you know, someone could have a, a frame of reference for a word that makes more sense to them than something that actually is, right? And so I think about, you know, the things that um, I misunderstood, you know, immersed in certain cultures that I didn't quite fully understand until I was out of the situation. And I was like, oh, that's what that meant, or that's what they were saying. Uh, oh, and this is how I took it, but this is why I took it this way, right? Right. And so I, I look at man and woman, the English man and woman, the same way. It's like, it makes sense to us that it would be, okay, um, man came first, and woman is like the whoa, a man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get it. It makes sense. But then if we look at what man and woman actually was, right? Uh, the original words for it, it's like, oh, well, maybe it's, it, you know, maybe it's not even that order. Like you said, maybe it wasn't man first and woman second. Maybe it was both of them together first and then the separation, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I mean, uh, clearly, like you're saying, like from what I deduced from what, you know, you said that the, uh, the article from, uh, uh, the previous Actually, Laura yeah. Chaim Chaim Chaim. Yes. I don't have I don't have a Hebrew. I mean, I would love I would love to learn Hebrew. Let me too. I, I really but it's to. like such a big undertake. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I love that pronunciation from the neck. I don't know. <laughs> Fascinates me. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, like they were saying, it's like it's not just from the rib you know so like if you're taking something from mm -hmm. a body to create something else then you you don't you know you don't see it you know you see it as a separation i mean it's you know i don't know how else to see it you know it's like 
Adam was Adam and he was created and in God's image and and then then they they were sort of I would say even divided in two like the partnership for the partnership mm-hmm. and um we see that later in the story when when they bite from the apple and um uh, the tree the tree still fascinates me uh, for the good and evil but um we see we see when they um when god talks to them and said to the woman like you're always in a way like you're always going to long for him so like you, you see that uh, you know they those him and her are going to you know she's always going to long after him and um it's like you know it's like i don't even know what the right word for this but um uh all that to say is that uh even though we're separated and we are in two halves we are still meant to be one like you said before we're definitely meant to be one but um and unite in one as partners mm-hmm. so, you know like um you're supposed to unite the, uh, with your partner to become one you know so i want to go back to something that you said that i hadn't thought of either um genesis uh 126 where um god said let us make humankind in our image and i always thought pretty much like what you said i thought that was a projecting into the future into the next chapter or you know into when he made man and then woman right but (laughs) what if it is simply a statement right we he made humankind the one being right unified being the unity the joined everything in his image and according to his likeness. So it had the humanity, it had the spirit, it had, you know, the whole breath of life, the soul, the mind, everything, um, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, over the cattle and all of the wild animals of the earth and over over every creeping things, every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female he created them and that's interesting because i hadn't thought of it as okay until like until you said what you just said and until i read Heim and laura right where it's like he he cut them he took a side of this human being and made one side woman and one side man right it mm-hmm. gives a completely different understanding of who we are i think you know where yeah. the, the traditional teaching is, oh, women come from this little piece of rib bone and a man, you know, and how can you ever really feel fully human when you're, when you're told that your, your origins are a piece of bone, you know, just a piece of bone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that's the simplified translation, but yeah. um, if well, you have a hold, huh? like, yeah, I, I think we, I don't know. I mean, make us, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like now I see, and uh, I, yeah, I, I'm not, you know, I don't know, I'm not looking to make my own interpretation here, that's for sure. But um, when I'm looking at it, I think of God as both. I mean, God is both and none you know like he's neutral and he's both so if he's making something in his own image you know adam was adam was from red dirt but then he had the opportunity to be separated and have one side that is masculine and one side that is feminine and if, you know if to make that happen you don't just make it from a rib you make it from the entire hole that you're working with put him to sleep and then have that separation because you know it's like if you have a circle and then you cut that circle in half you know then one circle becomes more feminine and one more masculine but you're not going to you know you have two sides of the circle but you're not going to take a circle and then from that circle you're going to make a square <laughs> you know yeah it just doesn't make sense <laughs> it just doesn't make sense <laughs> so 
Um, and I think that uh, the feminine and the masculine, um, I don't know, we, we see throughout life. I mean, um, it plays a big role in our everyday life. And uh, I go ahead, you were going to say something. Well, I was going to point further down to verse 28. Um, mm -hmm. where it says, because I have literally never seen this this way. Like, I'm sort of going through a moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, wow, like, I will tell you that my understanding of Genesis 1 has always been, one, 1, 2, and 3, has always been that, you know, man was created, woman was created out of man, or go woman, right, like we said, and that Eve um, was not the primary um, uh, person in trouble because God spoke directly to Adam, right? So God told Adam not to eat of the fruit of good and evil, right? And so Eve, you know, didn't get in as much trouble or she wasn't held as accountable as Adam because Adam, she had to rely on Adam to tell her this. Like, that's always been my understanding, that God spoke to Adam, the first person, right? And because of that, Adam was ultimately in trouble because he had heard directly from God, whereas Eve heard from Adam about God, right? And this, <laughs> verse 28, going based on what you pointed out, says something completely different. It says, God blessed them and God said to them, he didn't say to one, he said to them, when they were one complete being which means, which says to me that even though they were joined, they were together, they were that one, that first human being, when he separated them, they had full knowledge of what he had done, right? And mm -hmm. what he had said and what his intent was, right? Because it says, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. I always assume, and also different translations say different things, but if we're going on the idea that God created one human being that was gender, genderless or had both genders in it, right? Then he's speaking to them both as they are one, right? Mm -hmm. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit, and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth and everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Mm hmm but here's what um here's what i'm going to say here like um cuz i you mentioned this about the speaking uh, with eve and adam so where did uh, where are you where's that cuz i was trying to be pay more attention uh with you know like the conversation mm -hmm. like is is like where's that exact passage where it says that god was talking to adam and adam was supposed to speak with eve Wait, Do you wait, have it? Wait, are you talking about the punishment? No, but no, like it, what I like, just read. What I just read is Genesis one twenty eight. Yeah, that is yes. I I followed you on that, but you were saying something about that God was communicating strictly with Adam, and then Adam was supposed to talk to Eve. No, so that's what I'm. That was the passage. I I'm saying I had always read that as. And let me see if I can pull up another version to see if I'm completely off. So say, for instance, if it's like I had never read it as a statement. OK, so it still says bless them. But say, for instance, when we go to Genesis 2. <laughs> because I knew about um... the them. No, somewhere along the lines, I remember seeing, uh, you see, uh, here I, yeah, tell me, read it. Okay, so this is uh, 2.15. 
and the Lord took took the man. So this is where it goes from them. Like chapter uh -huh. one was them, 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 right? Uh huh. And then chapter two sort of breaks down more detail, I think. But it says man all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So and the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper for his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs, this is where ribs is, one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said at last, his bone of my bones and flesh my flesh. This one shall be called woman for out of man, this one was taken. So mm -hmm. in okay. chapter scroll one. Down a, scroll mm -hmm. down a little bit. Is there more or that's it? Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the flesh and the man and wife and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Uh huh. Okay. And where do we have the specific instructions that God talks to Adam and not directly to Eve? Is there like in chapter three or anything like right that coming? Right here. He commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden. So this was the instruction, right? So he's telling, this, this says the man. So this is saying Adam only, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas before in chapter one, we're reading God told them, right? So that's, that's a discrepancy because I think what we focus on, and this is how I think the focus comes to Adam being there first rather than them being there together, right? Because we sort of gloss over chapter one as a over. As a summary. Yeah, right? Like maybe mm -hmm. he told them again after, right? But now I'm reading it differently. <laughs> now I'm thinking, well, maybe he told them first and this is the breakdown of his interactions with Adam, right? Um, so this is uh beginning of chapter three is where the serpent is you know twisting words and did god say you should not eat of eat from any tree in the garden and a woman said to the serpent we may eat we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden but god said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden nor shall you touch it or you shall die okay and then when she goes to her husband when a woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave some to her husband who was with her. So Adam was there the whole time, <laughs> who was with her and he ate. He didn't say a word. He's just like, all right, woman, do what you want to do. I'll do it with you, you know? And then both of the eyes, both their eyes were open and they both knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made long cloths for themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the, what I was thinking, like I'm thinking a little bit further because, um, so the way I see it, okay, they're both in the garden at this point and they're, you know, they, you have Adam and Eve and um, I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking too much ahead because I'm like mixing it right now, their story with the part where, it, like what I'm trying to ask you is that is sometimes you, you hear uh, like the part where women should not be pastors over men because, uh, uh, okay. I don't know. What passage would refer to that? So this goes into the punishments. Uh, the punishments. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And the reason why I say this is because, okay, and I, we're probably going to have a lot of people out there because, I mean, uh, they're not going to like 
as what we talk about here, but let's continue. <laughs> yeah, let's continue. <laughs> um, so, okay, so we've, we've gone through Genesis 1. We've seen that they are in the garden. Uh, they got an instruction, do not eat the apple. Both of them knew that they didn't need to eat the apple. Um, um, I didn't really understand and why they had the two trees, the tree of life and the one with good and evil, and then chose to go for the good and evil. I mean, I didn't really understand that temptation. So I think, uh, so I think from what I've understood of like, if you cross-reference good and evil or, um, yeah, the phrase good and evil throughout the Bible, it usually translates to knowledge, right? So mm -hmm. it's almost like, you know, there was a tree of knowledge and then there was a tree of life and death. And so you also get here where she says, um, so the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was also to be desired to make one wise. She took up his fruit and ate, right? So her mm -hmm. desire was for wisdom. She wanted knowledge. She wanted to know more, right? And so... Um, so I don't think it's like the des desire to actually be good or the desire to actually be evil. I think it was a desire to know what God knows, like what, what is God keeping from us or what is God hiding from us? And the truth mm -hmm. of the matter is, is that if they were made in his likeness, they had access to everything that he knew, but mm -hmm. the faith wasn't there apparently, or the understanding of what that meant wasn't there. Right. So they traded it for a symbol, basically. They traded, you know, their gifts for a symbol and they got the bum end of it. Mm -hmm. And this part here, when they, they fall and they they're get, like for me, somebody explained it really well. It said that basically, because again, you're going to hear the uh, today's, um, I would say, common message that is used by many especially somebody that's coming from uh romania like i do you know like uh, the woman was seen as the negative uh, character because she she bit the apple first but um i She's, think that what, that's the seducer who enticed the man to fall well here's the thing uh if you're looking at i was talking to somebody in romania she absolutely loved this new interpretation uh, basically, uh, not interpretation, but look at it differently. Like if the if the serpent comes in to deceive both of them, she she did bite the apple, but in deception because it said she was deceived. But then he wasn't. He knew mm -hmm. what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So his 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 sin was that he was so attached to her and so much loved her and could not separate herself that he willingly said, okay, this is forbidden, but if she did it, I will follow her. So it's two different kind of um, situations. And then that goes even further because when, when God talks to them, obviously God already knows, but he had to ask because <laughs> it's just, how it goes what mm -hmm. have you done it's like a parent you know you do something wrong yeah. you know you're like you're defying your parents your parents mm -hmm. say you know don't put the hand on the stove because you're gonna get burned and you're gonna do it and now you don't know what to do cry or run to them because it hurts but then you know you 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 know messed up so now um you know uh i think that when um oh. Look, when Glennis he, is joining. I'm sorry? Glennis, Glennis is joining. Perfect. So I think well, when... Hello, Miss Glennis. How are you doing? Good morning. Hello. Hello. It's just Darina and I. We're just getting deep into uh, inter various interpretations of, uh, where are we, chapter three of Genesis? Yeah. Right before the, right before the punishment. Mm-hmm. 